A homily for Lent 4, March 22nd, 2020. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated if you are not already. Abroad, an adverb. In or to a foreign country or countries, or similarly overseas, out of the country, in foreign parts. In different directions over a wide area, millions of seeds are annually scattered abroad. Abroad definitely sounds better than social distancing. As first mate, there's only one captain. I proclaim that this positive adverb is where we need to be right now. This sense of distancing, of not being in control, of envisioning our future in a different way is not new to humanity. It is not even new to God's people. Things are not your way, says God, rather reasonably, to Samuel. They are my way. You might as well get over grieving it now. I am looking for different things than you can imagine. Of course, that's a paraphrase. You have heard the real conversation. Little Samuel from a few weeks back, the one who answered God's call as Eli's apprentice, is now an important prophet. In the preceding chapter of 1 Samuel, Saul disobeyed the Lord's instructions to put all of the Amalekites to death and to destroy all of their goods. Instead, he captured the king and claimed some of the livestock as booty. Samuel refuses to walk with Saul any longer. And when he turns to leave, Saul catches him by his robe tearing a piece of fabric from it. Samuel uses this incident as a metaphor, saying that the Lord is now tearing the kingdom away from Saul. Despite their conflicts, Samuel still grieved over his longtime friend and king, knowing that God had rejected Saul. And Samuel is afraid. For so long he had thought things were stable, that he knew the present and understood the future. David is a surprise choice as God's anointed one. As a prophet, Samuel thinks he has the insight needed to predict. Samuel suggests Eliab. Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But God tells, on, tells him, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. And it is David, the youngest, who is handsome and whose heart shows in his eyes, whom God tells Samuel to anoint. David's heart is at the root of the Psalms attributed to him, 73 to 75 of them, including the 23rd Psalm we hear today. Is there a better antidote to fear than this one? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We often hear this psalm at funerals, both as comfort and assurance. But we need to remember that these words are not the good china. They may be used every day. They speak, of course, of the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. We understand in life and when facing death that our shepherd will never give up. Chad Bird speaks of it this way. In the Hebrew of Psalm 23, goodness and mercy do not follow us all the days of our lives. That translation is far too bloodless for the word radaf. It means chase after or pursue. The goodness and mercy of God don't follow us like a good little puppy dog. They gallop after us like a celestial stallion. They chase us down labyrinthine paths like the hound of heaven. They stay hot on our heels. The good and mercy of our shepherd redoff us all the way to heaven's gate and into the arms of the Father. 
I think that's why the passage from Ephesians should ring for us, even in these difficult and uncertain days. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Not in darkness, but darkness itself. And now we are light, because God has relentlessly pursued us for our salvation. We are human and fall into fear, but these words make it clear that being fearful is not the way we are supposed to live. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. The entire world is facing the threat of this novel coronavirus. We ought not be casual or careless, but we should recognize that fear comes from the wolves. We are the sheep. Today, the blind man learns what it means to live like a sheep with a good shepherd. Just as God saw something in David that was invisible to others, Jesus saw something in the blind man as well. Someone who would believe in the face of world pressures and someone who would see and live the truth. As we live these days, we need to ask ourselves if we are living this way. Are we in these difficult times able to see God's goodness? How grateful we are for this technology, which helps us to remain connected despite being abroad. Psalm 23 is a marvelous hitchhiker's guide right now. Your homework while we are apart is to take each verse and pray over it, settling on one word that sums up your emotional response. For me, these words are faith, beauty, comfort, trust, gratitude, and joy. If these are the examples we choose to live, we will all be on the path with our shepherd and shall not only be unafraid, but face each day with confidence and joy. In God's sight, we are not really abroad after all. Go and wash your eyes. We just need to see differently. Amen.